Welcome to Kellis Coder. Today we will start on our first little game on the Sega Mega Drive with the SGDK Toolkit riding in the sea because it is so much easier than doing that in a sim. Motherfucker! I love the 68000 CPU. It's in my trusted ST and we use it to uh, ride some nice scrolling bars on the Amiga. So I know my way around the 68000, which is the same CPU that was in the Mega Drive slash Genesis. But I never got around to creating a game for the Mega Drive initially because you needed a dev kit with a lot of hardware, way too expensive. And then when we had all the emulators and great cross assemblers or assemblers, I was like not feeling it. And recently I just happened to come across Stevan's SGDK. Stevan is a mad French scientist because he wrote this awesome tool chain to make Sega Mega Drives in C really efficiently. It's really brilliant. And the compilers these days have come such a way compared to the early 90s that the code is highly, highly optimized thanks to GCC. And I had a look at the code and it is really optimized, it's awesome. But the real heavy lifting is because of Stefan. You can actually just create PNGs with a colored index lookup for the palette and import them and his toolchain will make tiles in it, will not create duplicate tiles. It is insane, it saves so much time. Back in the day you had to create the tiles and then create the images. Now you just sit with your tablet and call up on your inner Bob Ross and you draw a couple of mountains and a couple of sprites and you export them and you're done. And that's what we're going to do today. We're going to draw the background and then we're going to scroll it. And all that I hope to fit in to a year uh, around 30 minutes. It is that easy after you set up the build system. That is the more trickier part. And even that has become easy with the Docker files that Stefan provides. So let's jump in and have some Sega Mega Drive fun. So we first start by creating the outline of our mountains and choosing a color. Now we will draw in the highlights with a lasso tool and a lighter shade of the same blue. We're using here the palette that I downloaded and that is in the git up here with the 512 Sega Mega Drive colors. But we can only use 16 of them. Currently I'm using the spray can to break up the patterns and give it a more rocky texture. And now I create a gradient for the sky and I will erase some of my overspray from her belly. Sorry honey. Now I'm finding a color or a nicer color palette, but I couldn't find anything. So I will use the same blues that I already have. This blue is too light, so I will go over it with the darker blue and creating some patches that indicate smaller rocks that I also break up with the spray can. Now we save our hard work and we will reduce the colors to 16 colors by clicking here and selecting new palette from sprite and we will set it to the maximum 16 colors and we actually have far less than 16 and that is good so now we can set it to color index mode so sprite color mode indexed and we just export it as a png that will satisfy you and me and sgdk so now that we uh called upon our inner Bob Ross and created this lovely image. Um, what I actually ended up doing is squashing the image down, the mountains, because this peak was too tall, and move it up a bit so that I had more foreground for the actual gameplay. So this is that image, but let me first walk you through the setup here. We have a rest folder, currently empty, and we have a source folder with boot with these two files. You can get them from the SGDK directory, that's how I set it up, but just use my uh, repository and it's properly set up. And I created a make file 
and that make file does a couple of special things. First, it removes everything from the out directory. As soon as something is built by this container, by this Docker container that we get into a mo in a moment, it will create an out file. Now, if you do not remove the out file and you change later on your resource definition, and it's already compiled, uh, it will not change the graphics. And building is so quick that you may as well just remove it completely. Then we have that Docker image with the tag SGDK. Now, how did I build this? The Docker file is already provided. So I go to the directory where I put my SGDK with capitals in this case. Don't know why I did that. Usually I hate capitals. And there is that Docker file. So you build it with docker build dot dash t as the gk in this case. We want the tag to be sgdk because we're calling it here. And then it will build it. If you have an M1 or an ARM based system, use this one instead. That contains all the build stuff for ARM as well. So that is a lot quicker. So after you build it, image list, you will see for some reason I have two. I don't know why I see two, but, and this was my old one that I used to use. That is really slow. It's, and it doesn't really do a great job with multiple files. So you have your uh, Docker file turned into a container, which is running in the background. So we can then run that Docker container to compile it. So this is the compile step. And then this step actually creates an out directory with the rom.bin. That is the rom that you will put on your card. If you have an EverDrive, this is the rom that you put on there. And I run the emulator called Blastem. That is something that was available on Ubuntu to be installed right away. Uh, use your own emulator here and pass in the rom, whatever you like. Right. So now we can actually start getting this image onto a ROM and onto the screen. Now getting it onto the ROM is really easy now because we drag it into the REST folder. Yes, all your images need to li uh, live in the REST folder. And we're going to create the resources.res file. This tells SGDK which things are available, what they are, an image, a sprite, etc. So in this case, it's an image. We call it game BG. Now, usually in games, I call uh, the layers. So BG1, background layer 1, background layer 2, background layer 3, etc. Since we only have a BG A and a BG B in the Sega, I'm just calling it BG B because this will be the far background. We will use BG A later on in another lesson for uh, the foreground where the holes are in the moon craters etc and you need to jump over then we need to tell it where to find that file well of course that is bg1v2.png and then we have the packing uh, how tightly it's packed so we do it fast you can do best as well for backgrounds best works because you generally draw the background when loading a uh, level and then not change it anymore uh, sprites you continuously change so if you have packed it really tightly so it's really tightly compressed it will take the 68000 a lot more time to decompress it and you get stutter in motion so best for now is uh, fast for now is good enough if we get into uh, storage issues, which I don't think, we can always change it to best. All right. Now we need to actually expose what is created by SGDK to our C file. So we're going to create another file. Resources.h. And a header file is only included once, so pragma once. And we're going to include the genesis because we're going to tell we're going to need a uh, image type. And you will get the squigglies. How do you solve this? Very simple, quick fix. 
include path, see CPP properties, it will create that file. The directory where you stored your SGDK and then ink for include. And there's a second one that we're actually going to be using as well. Res for resources. Yep. And that should look like this. And then we have IntelliSense. And then we need to actually expose it. Well, it is external because we put it in a different file maybe later on for now this should work actually cons should work probably as well but okay yeah so we have an image that's called bgb it's been parsed through this magical line into nice little tile sets which we can now actually then create so in the source so now that we have defined our resources, let's create a main.c in the source folder. Main.c. All right. Let's again include Genesis. And let's include the resources.h that we created. All right. And now we need a, a global very or it doesn't need to be global, but we'll make it global for the ease of it. And it's an unsigned 16. Now with the Sega of the SGDK, a couple of types are defined. We have the U8, unsigned 8, signed 8, unsigned 16, signed 16, unsigned 32, because the 68,000 actually has 32 bit wide registers. And the signed 32. So generally you will use those. Although an int, for example, will also work. But then it's sort of a guess what it will use in the background. Uh, because then it's up to the compiler. So we tend to use those uh, 3, 16, 32 and 8 uh, bit values ourselves. And I need to make an index. Oh, it's an unsigned 16. And this is for later use, tell user index. We need to tell it where a certain tile can be found and is started. Then we create our main. Main. And we will return a zero at the end. Actually totally useless because we never, ever, ever going to return from it. We have a uh, standard game loop. And in that standard gain loop, there's one thing that is always called there's the do v blank process. The SGDK does all its heavy lifting in this uh, system call, and it's called every time that the v blank happens. So it will uh, write the screen, and there is this little thing at the bottom where you have the v blank, and that's where it does its heavy lifting. Okay, so now let's first load the palette because we need that to tell uh, which colors we have. So we have the function set palette and then we have four palettes in the Sega Mega Drive. Now the de facto standard is palette zero is for the background uh, two, the BGB. Pal one is for the background A. Then we have palette 2 for the sp uh, player sprites and palette 3 for the enemy sprites. Now you can do palette swapping with interrupts on a certain line. Then you can swap palettes and create more colors on screen. But standard we have uh, 4 times 16 colors on screen. Okay, so palette 0 because this is going to be the far background, the background B. Hence we call it game BGB, right? dot palette and we need the data from that palette and palette is actually a structure with a pointer all right and then we need to load it into uh, the system and we can actually do dma that's pretty much the fastest direct memory access although when setting up a level you can get away with cpu of course 
as well. All right, now we need to tell which tell it is. So game bg b dot tau set tau set not tau map and then num tau. All right, and then we need to draw it to the screen. VDP draw image x. How convenient is this? Now we need to tell where to draw it. Is it the background A or background B? We said this is the far background, so it's background B. And now we need the pointer to the image. Now we have an image on the stack, so we turn it into a pointer with the ampersand. All right, game background B. And now we need a base tile number, and that is calculated. Now, how do we do that? Well, there is actually a nice little macro tile attribute full that we can use. We need to pass in the palette, palette zero. What is the priority? Is it in front or in the background? Well, in this case, there is no real sprite priority, so it's false. Then do we want to flip it vertically? Well, I mean, mountains upside down, that's sort of weird, so no, false. <coughs> well, uh, maybe I'm wrong, maybe we do want to flip them. Hmm. Do we want to flip it horizontally? Now, this could be a nice little illusion, of course, that you have one play, uh, one background, and you flip it to get a different uh, background look. But uh, no, we do not want to flip it. And then the index, well, that is, of course, what we just loaded. It's the index of the number tile. And uh, then what do we get? Comma. It's very good to uh, to read this. The x offset, well, we offset it to zero. The y offset, we set it to zero. And uh, the load pellets, we don't need that. False. And we want to use DMA true. Yes. Because we told it that we're going to use DMA. OK. So technically, this should actually draw this already. We have the sysdo blank, so that will handle everything. So let's compile this and see. But it will not be moving yet. And it's always good to compile uh, little things, because it's easier to debug small changes than big changes, and especially when you're in low level. There we go. So you see we see a part of it, because the screen itself is 320 by 240, and we made a set 512 by 256 so there's also a bit of uh, headroom all right so now let's move uh, let's make it move I like to move it move it yeah I like to move it so let's create a signed 16-bit value and we start at zero because that is our exposition remember all right and uh, I okay and then let's just move it, VDP set horizontal scroll, there we go. Which uh, plane are we going to scroll? Well, we told it it's the BGB. And with how many pixels? One uh, I and I minus minus, so we decrement I, we, then we scrolling it to the right. Okay, so let's build this, and it should now scroll one pixel every frame. Smooth, other emulators, it's also smooth, but this scrolls with one pixel at a time. Now let's imagine that you don't want one pixel at a time, because backgrounds, far backgrounds, scroll uh, slower than four backgrounds, uh, four front backgrounds. So let's just make a little comparison. And let's introduce a frame counter as well. That is an unsigned 16, since we're not going to decrement from it. And if it wraps over, it still works. Frame count, and we set that to zero initially. Then we uh, increment frame count by one each frame, because this is one frame. Every time that we hit here, 
the next code runs within that single frame. So CPU cycles become a premium at a certain point. So if frame count uh, modulo three equals zero, then uh, we will only decrement it and not every frame. So now it should move a bit slower. See, now it moves every third frame. And this gives a little demonstration how cool it is to use uh, C in this case, because there is no modulo instruction on the 68000. Now divisions are always very, very costly. So if you can avoid them, do that. So usually what you will do in this case, since it's every third frame, we can get away by a logical ending it and comparing it if it's three, because that's the first uh, two bits and that first bit always alternates, we get the same result. But for only uh, a couple of cycles compared to that modulo, which is a function with a lot of maths in it. So if you can find functions that do not have a uh, Multiplication, division, use those because cycles get at a premium at a certain point. But yeah, now it's scrolling nice and slowly. So this is how easy as it is. It's really that simple. So there you have it. We called upon our inner Bob Ross, created some mountains, and I will create a whole tutorial on Aceplate, how I created that. It would have been too long for this video. We exported it. And we brought it into SGDK, created a little C program, and it is scrolling nicely and seamlessly. Yes, yeah, seamlessly after I changed the dither of the sky to be horizontal and not accidentally diagonal, because there was a very, very clear line in the sky in the first try. So uh, yeah, that was the first step. In the next step, we're going to refactor the code create all the different files. It's a system that I came up with for writing games. Um, you're not bound to that. You can do it the way that you want, but this is something that fits in my logic. And basically every game that I wrote has some similar makeup. So, And in the third one, we will create the player sprite and import that with sprite animation. Don't expect too much Bob Ross out of me don't expect anything and well then later on we'll move it and actually build up our moon patrol clone so i hope you learned something and see you in the next one